Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday. Yes, welcome to Thursday, uh, and welcome to a type of video that I feel like we haven't done in a hot minute. I think we might have done mm -hmm. one in the earlier spring. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what category it was, though. But... <laughs> Unfortunately... Oh, shoes. Though I think we, I think we did shoes maybe like way or like oh. the transition between winter and spring. We might have done shoes. It was right around the time that we did the trend report. Yes, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay, so we make so many of these that like the when <laughs> kind of fades in the background, and the category so also ones. gets confusing because I'm like, which ones have we done? Oh okay. yeah, we did an athletic like <laughs> not too long ago either. Mm -hmm. Either way, we have a bolo video for you guys today, uh. and I do feel like it's at least been a couple months since we've done one, and we were hoping to do one that would fit kind of the current season. And so, what better for spring and summer? Which I mean, we're mid-summer at this point, so I can stop saying spring. We're in the hot part of the summer. <laughs> Then dresses. So today we have 10 dress brands for you. I came up with the full list, but Ryan did research on half of them and I did research on half of them. Mm -hmm. So we won't hopefully talk over each other because for the most part, one of us is an expert on them and the other probably doesn't know a ton. <laughs> hopefully this is a good mix of kind of higher end luxury niche designer mm -hmm. brands along with some maybe more accessible brands. A lot of them, obviously they're on this list because they're valuable. There's some value that goes into them but they might be a little more common like it really wouldn't be surprising to find most of these at a thrift store of yours yeah <laughs> my, my five mine might be a little bit higher so which we've done in the past too that ryan kind of mm. covers the maybe more accessible ones and i do the niche designer ones well, AKA, hopefully jack does the really expensive ones <laughs> and i do the one for the rest of us normal folk so hopefully we can teach you guys something new today i hope you guys enjoyed the tuesday haul we had mm. some pretty good stuff <sighs> there and then on saturday we're going to have just a normal what's on Saturday. It's me and Ryan. It'll just probably be missing some Friday sales because mm -hmm. Ryan, like I said on Tuesday, is sayonara ing again. Oh, I'm gonna have a good time. I'm gonna be going to Denver. Yeah. And then next week, in exactly a week, so mm -hmm. next Thursday, we are actually thinking of doing another bolo video. We were thinking that we haven't done a bolo bag video in at least over a year. I it's think it's been a minute. I think we've, we've done a bag video. at least once have, but there's there's definitely a bunch of new ones and also it'd be mm -hmm. fun to focus on maybe some like spring summery type of bag brands yeah. so we're gonna do that and next tuesday i think is a thrift with us or something i don't know i just know next thursday <laughs> is another bolo video yes. that we're pretty excited about too but now right now we're on uh, this bolo video and this bolo video is dresses the dresses and so i suppose i will jump right into the dresses my first brand is a brand that i have actually never personally had experience with but i have seen it at a few like runway TJ Maxx stores. I have never seen this brand before. And it is called Benjamin. I hope I'm saying that right. It's like Benjamin but with an A at the front. It's almost like the hmm. like the name Benjamin, I always think of. But it's B-A-N-J-A-N-A-N. Benjamin <laughs> puts emphasis on quality of their dresses, and they're very, very, like, non-fast fashion. They didn't directly say, like, we don't like fast fashion. But there's a lot of use of the word, like, quality, slower speeds at creating our items, and we spend time putting She's effort. circling around it. Yeah, it was, like, working around <laughs> the word fast fashion, but you can tell that their whole emphasis is like we take time to make quality prints that we hand print etc they are like fully sustainable everything they do they use excess material for all kinds of different things we'll get into in a second they use hand crafting techniques including like this wood carved stamping that i showed to ryan oh yeah that was actually super interesting so it was basically like if you're familiar with like printmaking like a wood block where you get this massive piece of wood and these little chisels and you carve out a design in it and it's basically like a stamp and you can make them like really big or what the guy was doing in the studio was making them small and like that's how they were doing the print he had like different sections of floral that would like normally repeat all over a dress and mm -hmm. he'd just stamp it into an ink and then stamp it on the dress and then make the pattern from it so, it was so cool yeah it was really cool they had a video on the website if you want to look that up you can they also how i was talking about they use their excess fabrics for stuff of course during a good old aunt janine they were making <laughs> masks with their excess fabric which actually i 
think wherever they create stuff, I think it was in India, the like princess of India created some kind of jobs program where people would make masks out of excess fabrics and Benjamin was one that like handed their fabrics over for this or something oh, like that. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was cool. And then they also recently made dolls, which is really Aww, interesting. They I'm made cute. little dolls with like little Benjamin dresses. I really like that. It was okay, kind of cool. Okay, like I want one. <laughs> and also, before I get into the pricing, they did recently have a Madewell collaboration and they are quite pricey. So if you find Madewell Benjamin, it is still valuable and definitely pick it up. Mm -hmm. And I think it's still at the store now or online. So it's very current. Benjamin dresses retail for about $300 to $450 and they resell on Posh and The Real Real for about $150 to $300. So they do keep a hefty chunk of their value and they are sold at Saks, Nordstrom, Shopop, and even some pieces are sold at Anthropology. I have a couple of dress brands that are like really good partners with Anthropology. Okay, so my first one is a brand that I'd heard of, but I'd never had any personal experience with. It's Love the Label. And I knew because this brand kind of exists with Intermix is one of them. And then, oh, there's another one. One of those like really Shop like- Shop has a lot of love. Yeah, label. of like really like good bloggery, like picture taken dresses. So they are really focused on color, pattern, and individuality. They do a ton of silhouettes empowered by the powerful women that we work with. So a lot of these kind of like bigger shoulders, longer lengths, like these really kind of like power move looking dresses. They do a lot of matching sets. They do a ton of like tiered stuff and a lot of it's like really trend oriented. So they'll kind of take like, if it's puff shoulders, they'll do like four or five different of their variations on like a puff shoulder and then they'll put like a fun print on it. They retail for about 200 to 450, 200 obviously looking more like a mini dress and then 450 going up into like the bigger, more elaborate maxi dresses. And they resale for like 75 to 250. And I think that's really heavily based on like style. Cause I didn't see a ton of like the newer ones on like Poshmark or eBay that weren't, you know, kind of like cheaper. Like they were all like still pretty expensive. And they're sold to places like Anthropology. This is the one that has a really, really big connection with Anthropology. They had a ton of them in like the regular st store and then they had some in like the Beholden market, which I thought was super pretty. Mm -hmm. So the Revolve, like Nordstrom, Saks, like any of the typical big designer department stores, Shop Up. Um, I have actually them. seen Love the Label at TJ Maxx, which was a oh. long time ago. I saw a few pieces, but I'm sure they were part of the, what do they call Contemporary brands. So oh, like the yeah. nicer brands. Mm -hmm. But I feel like since I saw them there, they've almost like become a bigger name and become more valuable. So mm -hmm. they're almost like the inverse of what usually happens with TJ Maxx brands, <laughs> where like once they hit TJ Maxx. It's kind of gambling. It's almost like the reverse. Like they kind of started there with a few pieces and now I feel like they're more of a name and they're more sought mm -hmm. after because they're just so trendy. And a stuff. ton of celebrities wear them. Yes. So many celebrities. So my next brand is one that is called Favorite Daughter, which is such an interesting name for a brand. So yes. Favorite Daughter was founded by two sisters. Two sisters. And their names are Aaron and Sarah Foster. And I believe that they're one of those situations where their dad is quite a money-making millionaire guy who I think helped them start their business. Uh -huh, I'm not completely sure, and I don't know if it's the exact same situation <laughs> as some of the other brands, but I think that's the situation. Their whole thing is they make what they want and what they like. They said their thing was like, they got sick of like looking in their closet and like washing their clothes and buying new clothes and washing them and instead wanted to just make what they want. It was like a really weird kind of like, I, like, it was I'm kind of hard too to... too rich to do laundry, I don't so know. I just want to make all my clothes. I have no idea. Oh my god. But they want you to find something that you would steal from your sister, is their whole catchphrase. It's meant to be very, very trendy, but also apparently be quality. I can't really speak for it, because I've only mm -hmm. seen it a couple times at Nordstrom Rack, and it was just a few pieces, so I don't really have, like, a full opinion no. on that. They were just, like, <laughs> black-ribbed dresses, which, like, I yeah. feel like all black-ribbed dresses kind of feel the same. Yeah. Their retail price for dresses, so I forgot to make this note in the beginning. We're talking strictly dresses mm -hmm. since this is a dress bolo, so basically all these brands make more than just dresses, yes. but any pricing, we are strictly talking dresses. Mm -hmm. So their dresses retail from 200 to 275 and they resell for 100 to 150 and they are sold at Nordstrom, Saks, Favorite Daughter's own website, and then also they're sold at Anthropology too, which honestly kind of surprised me because their hmm. stuff it's not very like, printed it's, it's a little more minimal it's more like the new bloggery kind of looks where it's just like oh what's tan, that called um like minimalist no it's like the clean girl 
I aesthetic. I've heard of like minimal. Anyway, so the next one I know I've mentioned before and I've talked about because I found a few pieces recently, um, but I don't think we've ever like taken the delve. So it's for Love and Lemons, and I always knew this brand originally as a lingerie company. They are this like really, really, really high end, really expensive, like teeny little lacy lingerie company that was like really popular back in the day. But they do make a lot of dresses, and I think now they're kind of getting a little bit more known for their dresses versus some of their other stuff. So this was funny. They are, were originally founded by two friends who had a lemonade stand when they were like 10 years old. And they're like, let's make a lingerie company. Yeah, I was gonna say, that's quite the shift. I guess with your coming of age, you just were like, it's you know a- what? Grow the lemonade stand. Let's lingerie. Make bra. No, it was weird. They were like, and then they delved into the fantasy of making whatever they wanted. And like, it was kind of a weird, like, <laughs> origin story. I was like, um. Interesting. Okay, thank you. So it was founded in Wyoming in 1996, which is hysterical to me. So they do. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> overall enthusiasm. Overall enthusiasm. The wild west in there. The wild love west. Your lemon. Okay, but like, who's going to that lemonade stand in the middle of Wyoming? Oh, There's nobody hot. there. <laughs> Um, so in terms of their dresses, they definitely still have that, like, lingerie-inspired look to them. They're very revealing. A lot of them are very short. They have very strategic cutouts in places that kind of lingerie does, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. They do a lot of floral, a ton of floral, a ton of, like, pastel colors or, like, neutral. Think, like, grainy core colors, like, that grainy pink with white or, like, lavenders. They are also really, really, really expensive. They (laughs) retail from $160 to about $350. And they do bridal stuff, but the bridal stuff was kind of, like, a one-off, and they'll seem to be upwards of that. 650, excuse me, not 350. And then they resale for about 60 to 300, depending on the style. Because the I, older ones don't do very good. And I know that Love Your Lemon... Love Your Lemons. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that for Love and Lemons is one of those brands that has, like, really sought after blogger favorites and just, like, customer base favorites. That's what I was gonna get into. Oh, so, I thought you were done. <laughs> no, I'm not done. You interrupted me. So, For Love and Lemons definitely kind of exists in the same space as, like, Unif or a lot of those other, like, YRU kind of companies where they're well-known for something, but then they have these, like, really successful cult-following pieces. So, not that, like, in, their, in the same style vein as Unif or whatever, but, like, that group of people that, like, really wants specific things from them. They and kind of, like, Spell and Gypsy. Oh, yeah. Spell and Gypsy is the same way. Different quality, but... Very different. <laughs> very different market. But, but similar like, to that's honestly Gypsy. the example I should have said. is like, pieces that people really want because, like, Mega Mar- Marco wore one or somebody famous wore one or like and that kind of stuff goes for like crazy amounts of money like over $500 and if you remember in the past when we have brought up for love and lemons I keep wanting Mm -hmm. to call it love and lemons (laughs) (laughs) there's so much love and fruit love your melon and for the love of your lemons (laughs) yes Anyways, what I was saying was, I know when we brought it up during, like, hauls or what sold Saturdays, this mm-hmm. is the brand that we've said, the quality, in our <laughs> own opinions, doesn't match Bad. the price tag. It's, like... So, that's that. It's just not... Uh, <laughs> Which, actually, when we said that, on the last time that we made the comment about For Love and Lemons, I almost <laughs> messed it up again. I down. had to read it. I know last time we talked about its quality, somebody requested the idea that maybe at some point we do like a personal recommendation of brands that we know are very expensive but like wouldn't recommend them based on what they <gasps> feel like oh my god we should and do then, like and then one where it's like brands we would recommend because they definitely fulfill their value and whatever but i don't know maybe someday oh we gotta continue this. let's do a this we not that con- video we gotta someday. continue this book yes video. we do we're talking about dresses not this not that love and lemons is sold a ton of different places it's super accessible which i feel like if you're gonna find any of them in a thrift store it's probably gonna be something from this brand and they're sold at like Revolve, Shop Op, Nordstrom. Free people, they've done a ton of collabs with, but they also every now and again will trickle down into a TJ Maxx, especially if you have like the contemporary brand section. Like, the, you can find them kind of all over the place. And even if they're not blogger favorite, I would get them at the thrift store. Yes. They are still sell really well, but... Some better sell. than others. Yeah. So the next brand that I have on my dress bolo list is called Chiara Bani. And Chiara Bani was founded by Chiara Bani. Surprise, surprise. Wow. Which, again, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. And it was founded in 2007. So Chiara Bani combines London punk along with Parisian couture. Okay, but I kind of love that, though. I don't really see that vision, but it was an interesting. <laughs> I'm not a London. It was punk. an interesting description. 
what they also, I think this is like the simpler version of that, is they're sexy yet businessy. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like some cuts, some slits, some showing the shoulders, but at the same time, you probably could wear it to a party at the office or something like that. That's yeah. the vibe it gives off. They use a lot of just like singular colors. So like the dress will just be all black. It'll just be all like this blue. It'll be all red with not any other colors and not really other like embellishments. They're pretty like plain. And another thing with Charabani is they always use this like neoprene type fabric. Obviously not 100% of the time, but that's what I correlate them to mm -hmm. is there's just this feel of like swimsuit to their dresses. Yeah, it's a really like specific kind of fabric. It feels high quality, but it's very stretch. It's almost mm -hmm. like Hervé Leger. How yeah, it's, it has a like very a specific feel that it almost always has. Yeah. That's the same with Chiari. Chiarabani. It feels like it'd kind of be a little like, yeah. you know, like sucky in a little Very bit. Very body con, right? That's what Bo that is? Body shaping. It's kind of like... I think it's body con. <laughs> Y'all know what we're I'm talking so about. Bad I'm with, so bad with dress. We... Like, like types. <laughs> Forgot our descriptive When I have today. to pick categories on eBay for dresses, I'm like, um... Oh, I Google um, it every single time. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, Charabani retails for about seven hundred to twelve hundred dollars. So these are some pricey Jesus. dresses, and they don't keep a ton of resale, but they're still very valuable. They are about two hundred to four hundred on the resale market. They're sold at Neiman's, they're sold at Nordstrom, Saks Fifth, all the classic mm -hmm. like department stores. Not as much on like Shopbop and Revolve. They're more mature and businessy, so they're kind of more of a department store. I feel thing. like yeah, the people that are buying the Charabani dresses are very like, I'm gonna go to Nordstrom and buy one. It's very like you go for the experience to buy the dress kind of a thing. And if you know the brands, I do relate them more to Hervé Leger or I relate them more to like Layla Rose. Even though Layla Rose has some cuter pieces, but just kind of more mature. Very expensive. A little bit more, more on the mature. conservative side. Yeah. My next brand is a brand that I think we've all heard a little bit about because they do definitely make a lot more dresses. <laughs> and if you watch our channel, we wear the t-shirts a lot. Constantly. I'm not in one today, unfortunately. <laughs> it's Ganny. Ganny. I personally am a huge fan of this brand. I think their stuff is super high quality. Speaking outside of the dresses, but the dresses obviously get limited in with that. Their t-shirts are amazingly soft, I will say. They and their one, prints are so they're cute. They're one where the price is actually not crazy high. That would be on the, the good side the of quality that is really good. <laughs> yeah. So I did know they were Danish. For some reason, I always thought they were French. Um, it's a Danish ready to wear company founded in 2000 by Fred Trusselin. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a Dane. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, but so apparently Ganny's had this massive resurgence in the U.S. because of their like new agey, like different takes on like trendier pieces, but also make them a little bit more classic in the U.S., which has been super fun because um, it's been around for 23 years. I was just like it's an old brand. Weird. Well, I shouldn't say it's an old brand, but like it's. 20 years old. Yeah. That's, wow. Griffey Fred. So kind of like what I was saying, they definitely have this weird niche where they take like a minimalist style. So the dress itself, if you were to take everything off of it, wouldn't be super elaborate, but then they add like a fun color or a fun print or like a small detail to kind of like elevate it just a little bit. So it becomes this like timeless piece you can kind of wear whenever. So they retail out for about 165 to 495 for some of the more elaborate pieces. And they resale now because I think they're still pretty popular for the newer ones can still go for a pretty good amount of money. The older ones I was seeing about $60, whereas a lot of the newer ones I was seeing like north of $150, kind of like $175, kind of a range. And they're sold on their own website, they're sold at Shopbop, Nordstrom, like pretty much any like newer, like trendy or kind of like designer department store or website, you're gonna find a Ganny piece or two. Ganny does a really interesting mix of like avant garde, mm. new, ultra trendy, like puffy sleeves, crazy, yeah. along with just like classics, like t shirts, mm -hmm. like normal dresses, slip yeah. dresses. They really touch everything and they also. Also lately have been doing a lot of collaborations. Yes. They did a Levi's collaboration oh. that was really cute recently. So next up for me is a quite niche brand, but I am so excited about it and I really foresee it taking off, but I mean, we'll see. So it is called Autumn Adegbo. It is a black female owned business and it is named after the founder. Her name is Autumn Adegbo hmm. and she is Nigerian and she was actually born in New York, but then raised in the Midwest in Indiana, which I thought was so Oof, interesting. Indiana. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Like, why? <laughs> but she actually has been mentored by Tori Birch since 2020. So she's Dang. learning from a very prominent designer. Mm -hmm. She loves prints. She loves all kind of prints animal prints, floral prints, every kind of print 
under the sun and it's all very colorful mm -hmm. very like farm rio esque just super super loud amazing prints her brand has also been funded by myla kunis cameron diaz and gabrielle union at least recently that has happened Three i awesome think there's probably brand. more people in the past who have done it but she has serious like i was reading all about her she has like hustled to build her brand she has worked like from the bottom up in fourth Good grade she was the best dressed in her class I I just like period queen. Love, I Good love for her. I love everything about this brand oh, so I love much. That. Her dresses retail, they got a pretty penny. They Good are for you, girly. Penny. They retail for $400 to $1,100, which is wow. amazing. <laughs> and they resell currently. I'm putting an asterisk on here. They resell currently for $100 to $300. And like I said, I just, I really see this brand like taking off. I could you be completely wrong. I just, I could really see, see it, it taking off. It's very young. It's it's very mm -hmm. new. It's very pretty. I don't know. And her stuff, just go look at it. It's mm -hmm. Well, actually, you've been looking at it. It's so pretty. Sold at Nordstrom, Neiman's, Intermix, Shop Up. So it does reach the trendier crowds, but mm -hmm. it's also just very expensive. But I, very pretty. I got <laughs> like, feeling I just, be hearing I, a lot from this autumn. I really, Adegbo, really, really liked her stuff. It's very it's pretty. Because I love Farm, and it just kind of mm -hmm. gave me that vibe. Okay, so my next one is definitely one that I feel like a lot of people have heard of. It's a really well-established brand in terms of, like, formal wear and, like, dresses. It's Fame and Partners, which they are Aussie. It was founded in Australia. So it's a vertically integrated company, which I literally had no idea what that meant. But it basically means, like, so the technical definition is, like, people at the top, like, you know, do whatever to the bottom. But it also has something to do with, like, how they design stuff and, like, the clientele. It's, like, a business built for, like, a niche clientele. It didn't make any sense to me, but they're very proud of it. So I figured I'd mention it. And they have a focus on custom clothing, which not all of it is custom. Um, but there's a section on the website where you can pick, like, a style and then you, like, take all these measurements and send it to them. Pay for it and then they'll send you a dress but they also have like stuff that you can it's called the ready to ship section hmm. you can just buy it and they'll send it to you so they definitely have these really like elevated formal oriented silhouettes like nothing too crazy in terms of like detail they're all very refined very elegant but they definitely kind of have these really fun like seasonal like prints or color changes so like in the spring it'll be like a really pretty formal gown but it'll be like neon pink and then in the spring they'll do like all these really vibrant florals and then winter it gets a little bit more like dark which i think is really cool most of them you're gonna find are gonna be maxi dresses because they are definitely made to be like a bridesmaid's dress or you wear to like a fancy party or something like really formal they don't retail for a ton at 175 to 450 in terms of like anything like bridesmaid can be like super expensive and they resale N older ones not the greatest for like 45 to 50 dollars but the newer ones especially that have these like really nice trendy colors to them that can go for like around 150 and they're kind of sold anywhere they're evolved they're at their own website where you can buy the custom pieces nordstrom has a ton of them Saks has a ton of them it's like a lot of places that gear more towards like formal wear and like designer bridal it's like beholden there's a ton of them at beholden and free people it's show me your moo moo but nice yeah that's exactly <laughs> what it is show me your moo moo but, high but quality. like and pretty the yesification of show me your moo yes <laughs> So my last dress brand for this bolo video is Solace London. And I recently found a Solace dress in the bins. And I oh, also yeah. have another Solace dress that I have in my closet that is gorgeous. So hopefully Editing Jack is putting a video of the one that I have here because I really, really like it. I've never found it before. Solace was founded in 2013 by two lifelong friends, a male mm -hmm. and a female. And Cute. I don't think I got their names. They try to blur the lines of statement making with day-to-day -day clothing mm -hmm. and i will say they do it really really well from looking at the stuff on their website it is sophisticated yet modern yet timeless yet futuristic is their own words That's so a hard thing to design. they are time traveling <laughs> all over the clock like it's crazy time traveling all over the clock <laughs> that should be a t-shirt and they are classy and classic but also trendy and accented so they really mm -hmm. they're they're trying to like take the polar opposite and mash them in the middle. Smash them together. Which I will say I agree with. Like, it's things with maxi length and long sleeves, which would give you more of a, like, conservative vibe. Mm -hmm. But it'll have, like, slits all the way up the side and all the way down here. So it is a good mix. To me, Solace is kind of what Chiara Bonnie said they are. I think, in my opinion, Solace does it a bit better. 
-hmm. by making something that is slightly businessy and can be dressed as formal, but also it could be super trendy. You could take a fun picture like after yeah. your business party. They just and do it, was, it a little bit. Yeah, to yeah. me it's just they hit the mark more. So they retail for four hundred to six hundred and fifty, which honestly, just by looking at them, I thought that was kind of a fair price. Mm -hmm. And after feeling like the one that I have, they have very high quality fabrics. So I do get that price range, and they resell for about a hundred to five hundred. That really, really depends on age and style. They're sold on Ukes, Net-a-Porter, Farfetched, and actually a lot of the online luxury stores. Not oh. as much the department mm -hmm. stores. So I don't know if that's because they're slightly newer, even though 2013 isn't. That's 10 years old. Yeah, so I don't really know why. Nordstrom and Saks didn't seem to have a ton of it, but they're sold online. Get yourself one. <laughs> <laughs> Go get one. Grab them while you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my next one I think is a little bit more unique in the way where she does a ton of like strictly bridal. Miss Jenny Yu, I absolutely love her. So her big focus is to create like elevate modern looks in these really semi-neutral, but like it could be a green, but it'd be like a forest green. So they're like these really muted colors of dresses. She has this really big emphasis on bridal wear. She's kind of like younger Vera Wang, mm. kind of. Again, she has this massive focus on like bridal dresses, which I won't get a ton into the prices of those because they can be like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. She has some really expensive gowns. So most of the ones that I feel like you would find if you were in like a thrift store would be one that somebody would wear to like a formal event or like a wedding, kind of like Fame and Partners. They retail for about 280 to like 2400 in terms of some of the like- Probably like a wedding. Yeah. It's like gowns that you can like get married in that aren't the custom, like really, really overly done wedding dresses. And they resale for about 100 to 300. I sold a couple for 125 that I thought were pretty plain, but they sell very fast. So she's weird because she's not really sold at like department stores. She really focuses on like bridal stores. So like, I don't know if we have any in the cities, but like those really high end, like designer bridal boutiques would have a ton of her stuff. Uh, Beholden, the anthropology. Beholden has a lot. The anthropology bridal section has a lot of Jenny Yu. I think she's even done like a collab or two with them before. The Jenny Yu website and then like the Nordstrom, but not like Nordstrom the store, like the Nordstrom like bridal sections would have a ton of her stuff, but she's not really sold that many places. That is all the brands that we have oh my for God. you today. Just so you guys know, <laughs> if we had any like slip ups or stumbling, we are on our fourth video film today. Yay. So, <laughs> so these lights are literally melting my brain. <sighs> yeah. Speaking of other videos we filmed, we did do a second channel video that went up yesterday. We were probably wearing the same things you're wearing right now, That's but okay. we talked about our tattoos that we've had and gotten over the years and what all their meanings are, when we got them, what order we got them in. So if you're interested in that, I I know a lot of people asked about that in the Q and A's of the past. It would take too much time to describe in the Q and A's, so we thought we'd make a second channel video, and we're finally doing it. We've I'm talked excited. about this forever, and then we also we're gonna keep uploading on the second channel. That's always like the first link below, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in that, you can go check that out. But we will see you guys on Saturday for what sold Saturday. Let us know below if you've uh. had experience with any of these brands and how they did for you. If you have, and also if you learned something new, we always love to hear that. And we will see you guys on Saturday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>